Now we're going to cover data structures. In computer science, a data structure refers to the method which one uses to organize their data. Six basic data structures are commonly used in R. The first one is vectors, which contain ordered data of a single type. Next is lists, which are a collection of objects. Third is matrices. A matrix is a two-dimensional array where the data is all of the same type. Next is factors, which are used to designate levels within categorical data. Next is data frames, which contain two-dimensional data where the data can have different types. And finally, there's arrays, which are objects that have more than two dimensions. So they're n-dimensional. Let's start with vectors. We can create a vector by using the C function to combine multiple values into a single vector. So here is an example. In this example, we'll combine four separate numbers into a single vector and output the resulting vector to see what it looks like. So we say x is equal to the C function. And inside the C function, we say to combine 1, 3, 3, and 7. So let's run that. And then let's print out x to see what happens. Next, let's look at lists. Lists are a collection of objects. This means that each element can be a different data type, unlike vectors. In the next example, oops, the next example, let's create a list that contains two character objects and one vector with the list function. So we've got a variable named first name, which is equal to John, last name, which is equal to Smith. We've got a vector with a one, three, three, and a seven, and we'll assign that to a variable named favorite numbers. And then we're gonna create our list, which combines all three of these elements. So person is equal to a list of, or a list containing first name, last name, and favorite numbers. And this is different than the vectors because we're using the list function instead of C. And also these three uh, pieces of data are not the same data type. So this is character, character, and then vector, but we can still combine them because this is a list. So let's run it and see what happens. So when we print out our list named person, we can see that it prints out our three separate objects. All right. Now let's do matrices. Let's clear all of this out, clear the console, clear the environment. Okay, a matrix is a two dimensional array where the data is all of the same type. So let's create a matrix that has three rows and four columns. Um, so we specify the number of rows within row, the number of columns within call, and then you'll notice we're supplying a vector of data to turn into this matrix. So we'll create that. And then let's print out X to see what it looks like. So you'll notice we have uh, a kind of a table that has two dimensions and it's taken our vector data and pulled it into three, three rows and four columns. Next is factors. So let's get rid of this example. Here's our new factor example. Let's clear out the rest of it. Okay, so factors are used to designate levels within categorical data. So we're gonna use the factor function on a vector of assorted color names to receive the levels that it contains. So we've got a vector with various characters containing color names. We're going to assign that to X. And then we're going to create a new variable called colors, which is a factor of the X vector. We'll do that. And then let's print out colors to see what it outputs. So it outputs the full vector, but then gives us the levels. So the levels in this vector are blue, red, and yellow, which is essentially all the distinct categories in the vector. All right, next we have data frames, and these are really important for data analysis. So let's clear all this out so we have a fresh slate. 
and then let's copy our example over. Okay, so data frames contain two dimensional data. Unlike the matrix data structure though, each column of a data frame contain, can contain a differing data type. But within the column itself, the data must be of the same type. So let's start by creating two vectors. So the first vector we'll name people and it'll contain all character data. The second vector will name ID and it'll contain numeric data. So these will end up being our columns in our data frame. You'll notice all the data within the columns are the same data type, but different columns have different data types. So let's run those. And then we're going to use a function called data.frame and then set what the columns are going to be. So we're saying the ID column is going to be equal to the ID vector. And then we're going to create a column called person and set it equal to the people vector. And we're going to store that data frame in a variable called DF standing for data frame. So let's run that. And we're going to print this out, but you'll notice over an environment, we can kind of interact with the data a little bit already, but let's print it out and see what it looks like. So we have a two, two dimensional data set and in the first column, we have numeric data. In the second column, we have text data. All right, finally, we have arrays. So arrays are objects that can have more than two dimensions. This is sometimes referred to as being n-dimensional. Um, so let's copy our example. That The dimensions of this example are one by four by three. So you'll see that the data now consists of one row and four columns that are spread out over a third dimension. So the dimensions you can see are set here and we will supply a vector uh, to turn into an array. So we'll do that. And then let's print out that array to see what it looks like. Um, so this may be a little bit harder to conceptualize than two dimensional data, but it can be very important when doing analyses.